Hey guys, welcome back again to another video. This is going to be part one of the humanization video, and it's going to be the last video that looks like the slideshow, okay? Um, and by the way, that's yours truly, sitting there behind a drum kit during one of my recent uh, concerts. Anyway, I've, it's really important to sit back and uh, talk about drumming and what it would mean to be a drummer. Uh, because it's important to know why, when you write something, why it will or will not work. For example, when I first started writing, um, I would just copy and paste what I did on guitar exactly on the bass, and then I would record it, and I would be like, "Gosh, yes, that's awful." Well, what had to happen is I had to learn how a bass player plays bass guitar in order for my songs to sound better. Before I could know, oh, well, duh, just because Alex Webster can follow every guitar line that they write in Cannibal Corpse perfectly doesn't mean he always plays it, and he says so himself in behind-the-scenes uh, videos when they're recording Eviscerate Plague and stuff like that. He says, what's the point? You know, it's about the song. So it's, it actually is important for you to learn and to think like a drummer and see what's possible and see what is not possible, okay? Yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot of jokes and, you know, wisecracks and a bunch of drummer jokes and stuff like that. So it's legitimate. You know, some drummers are exactly what the joke sounds like. But, I mean, the fact remains that without a good drummer, your music will suffer. Okay? Now, you, guitarist or whatever, whatnot, you have a drumming sample library at your fingertips. Perfectly sounded, or I should say perfectly recorded drums, okay? What do you do with it? All right. How do you write realistic drums if you don't even know what it means to be a good drummer or what a good drummer does? All right. So that's what this first part of the video is going to look at. The second part of humanization is actually I'm going to go into the Superior Drummer plugin and Reaper and show you exactly what I do. All right. So what makes a good drummer? Right. Skill, consistency, creativity, a solid meter. All right. Now, a solid meter doesn't mean playing exactly on the beat. It just means you keep the beat of the song going. Solid. Solid meter. Okay? The ability to improvise. Uh, the ability to play to enrich the song. All right? Uh, you have drummers like Buddy Rich, who were absolute virtuosos. Uh, but truth be told, I really don't like Buddy Rich because he's boring to listen to. Uh, first of all, he did the same exact solo for 40 years. You go back into the 1950s and 60s on YouTube, he does the same solo. So he basically did the same solo for 40 years. True. Definite, definite virtuoso. Amazing technique. Absolute machine on the drums. But once you heard one Buddy Rich solo, you heard them all. Okay? Same thing with George Kalias. Man, he plays some freaking good death metal drums. But sometimes, just dude, slow down. <laughs> play to the song. We, we know you have chops from hell. No need to do it in every single song, right? So you play to enrich the song, right? And also, a good drummer can read music and, well, I should say notation for drums, okay? And he does understand the genre he's playing in, all right? Now, good drummers will have listened to music that has great drumming, reproduced and practiced their favorite songs and styles, searched out other drummers to understand new styles, learn how to keep a steady rhythm, doing nothing fancy, okay, and to follow a measure. Following a measure would be like hitting the crash on every upbeat, on the one. One, two, three, four, you know, things like that. Not necessarily hitting the snare all the time, but following a measure, right? So that's a lot of work that a drummer goes into being good, right? So why does it matter? Well, as you can see, if you're not a drummer, you don't actually know all the time and dedication that has gone into being a good drummer. All right, just think of you on a guitar or you on a bass or whatever instrument you're playing on. How long has it taken you to become a good player? What have you done? What have you studied? All right? Do yourself a favor and reflect the respect deserved by writing good and tasteful drum lines for your music. It's your music after all. If you write crappy drum lines, your music will sound crappy. It doesn't matter how awesome that six-string tapping arpeggio string-skipping solo you've done. It doesn't mean anything if your drums are weak, unrealistic, and they make no sense. All right? Plus, you never know. Maybe some dude on the internet will hear your song and be like, Hey, uh, I got some. I have an e-kit at home. I'd love to track some drums for this. It'd be fun. Okay? 
All right, if you, if you have showed no interest in writing realistic or tasteful drum parts, it'll show in your song, and ultimately your song will suffer due to it, okay? So do not skimp out on learning how to write good drums, okay? And the last part about this video before we get on to part two in the program is what can you do, all right? First of all, please understand that it takes time and practice to write good lines. Even, look, I'm a drummer, and I still have to practice. And I still have to go, huh, that kind of sounds bad, or what could I do here? So even for real drummers, it's it's an issue. So don't expect that you can just copy and paste some beats and get rolling. You know, some of the worst things that you could do, like, I should, shouldn't say the worst things. Like, Superior Drummer has all these grooves and these variations and stuff that you can literally just copy and paste, and there, you have a song. Well... Sooner or later, you're going to run into the situation where, oh man, I've used that variation three times now. I'd really rather have something else. Or, mm, it's not really fitting exactly into my song here. It's just not grooving. So, inevitably, you're going to have to learn how to write your own lines. And you'll be better for it because there are millions of people out there who have used the same variations in the Superior Drummer Library that you have. And who wants to sound the same, right? So, things that you can do to practice will be to write drum lines that match the music and play to your song. Uh, very commonly, this is syncopated kick drums, right? So you got like dun 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 on the guitar, so you got ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum on the kick drum, right? They match together, so they fit in the song, okay? Also remember that it doesn't always have to be lightning fast. Um, sometimes not playing anything or really pulling back the drums can be just as effective as going all out, okay? Be creative. Don't just do the bum, 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 tom roll. Maybe you could go tom, snare, tom, or tom, snare, ride, bell, or tom, snare, kick, ride, bell, tom, snare, kick, ride, bell, open hat, close hat. Uh, be creative. Try different things, okay? Watch your favorite drummer. Listen to your favorite band. Write their parts. You know, open up your MIDI uh, sequencer, listen to the song a few times, and write their drum part. Why not? you'll be able to see what they're playing and understand it, okay? Uh, please remember that drummers only have two arms and two legs, all right? So maximum, they can only hit four things simultaneously at the same time. Obviously, you know, when you have drummers like Derek Roddy and Terry Bozio who have, like, millions of pedals, they're able to hit effects and stuff with two pedals with one foot. Forget all that stuff. Just stick to the two arms and two leg theory. It'll really help you out, okay? Think about sticking patterns. All right, so if a drummer is right-handed, the right hand is going to be on the hi-hat, which will probably be in your left ear, right? So think about it. If you're playing, you know, a regular rock beat, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you know, with the snare on the upbeat, how much sense would it make if you start a roll that in real life, the roll has to start with the left hand? Doesn't make much sense, does it? Also, you have toms for a reason and floor toms for a reason. Don't start a roll on floor tom three that goes to floor tom four and then comes all the way to rack tom number one in less than a second. Yeah, the virtuosos could do it, but don't program your drums so that only a virtuoso can play it. Be realistic, okay? And lastly, you need to practice. You know, teach yourself how to write good lines. Listen to a lot of music. Compare your stuff to a lot of music. It will take time. Lots and lots of time. Okay? Almost as much time as it is for you to find that guitar tone that you really like, that you keep tweaking forever and ever, right? And uh, I'd like to give you a little tip, too. As a drummer, um, something that I always hear in songs that non-drummers uh, program, each time a drummer hits a cymbal for an accent or like at the beginning of a measure, 99% of the time they're going to hit the kick drum at the same time. Now, non-drummers and guitarists don't know this usually because they're not drummers, so they'll just have the cymbal hit really weak, okay? Put on that cymbal hit with the kick drum and just see the accent be even more powerful. Bam, bam, bam. So think about things like that, okay? It really is important to know the limits of, your, of the instruments that you're writing for. I mean, think of a conductor or think of Beethoven had no idea what the range of a violin was. How ridiculous would that be if he's trying to write violin parts that are only in the range of a cello? It wouldn't make any sense, would it? So it does matter. 
And maybe you're thinking, oh, this is stupid. He spent three parts of a video talking about the quote unquote the theory. He, you know what? He just wants to talk about how good of a drummer he is. No, I'm always learning. I can always get better. I'm really just trying to convey to you guys who are not drummers, and that's fine. I'm not trying to turn you guys into drummers. But it really is important to learn the instrument and to learn what is possible, what's impossible, what that, I don't want to say an average player, but what a good drummer is capable of. Not the virtuosos. Don't write virtuoso only material or you'll never find the drummer. Okay? Play, or excuse me, write to the song, right? So mostly uh, just have good taste. Listen, you know, feel it out. And practice makes perfect. All right. So in the next video, I'm actually going to get into the superior plugin, talk about the humanized features there, and then I'm going to open up Reaper and show you exactly what I do to humanize my drums to make them sound less pro like computery. All right. So uh, stay tuned for that, guys.